So a friend of mine was asking me recently about making magnetic silly putty. So I had a look around on the internet to see what there was and to see if I could use it. And sure enough, there's a reaction with PVA and borax that forms a silly putty. And it started me thinking about it. Now PVA stands for two things. It stands for polyvinyl acetate, which is the white glue that you find absolutely everywhere and you can buy in the builder's yard and it comes in big old tubs like this. And it also stands for polyvinyl alcohol. Now you can turn polyvinyl acetate into polyvinyl alcohol, but most of these products are actually a mix of polyvinyl acetate and polyvinyl alcohol, because the alcohol acts as a dispersant for the acetate. So I decided to give it a go. And sure enough, when I took the borax in there, it formed a silly putty, which was kind of really cool. And it forms a silly putty by um, creating cross-links between the polyvinyl acetate, polyvinyl alcohol, and the borax. And the more borax you have in there, the more cross-links you form, and the harder is your putty. Um, now, what they normally use is quite a weak solution of PVA and a 4% solution of borax, and that forms a slime. And as I say, if you increase the amount of borax or increase the amount of um, PVA in there, then you get a putty. Now, I was looking at um, plastic, plastics per se, and most plastics are a combination of um, three things, a plasticizer, a polymer, and some kind of filler. So I was thinking that it might be interesting to um, try the PVA mix in, in that sense. So what I've got here is a 50-50 mix of um, PVA, just the commercial stuff, and water. And I'm going to add in a little bit of glycerol. My glycerol, incidentally, is um, the plasticizer. So I haven't added much in there because I don't want it particularly plastic. So I'm going to add in my glycerol there to plasticize it, give it a stir up. Now if I chucked in my borax solution, that would form a plastic, but it'll form a kind of very watery plastic and I'm not particularly interested in that. So what I'm going to do is fill it with an inert filler. Now the uh, fillers you can use for this are legion, there's, there's tons of them. You can use cement, plasters, uh, plaster of Paris, fibres, um, all kinds of stuff, um, ground up clay, uh, metal powders. Uh, I used uh, magnetite and the magnetite made it into a um, silly putty. So what I'm going to use this time is a little bit of talcum powder because I, I really want it inert. Now this is just Johnson's baby talcum powder. You have to add the filler before you add the borax because once it's cross-linking there's not a chance that you're going to actually get that filler in there. It's, it's quite stiff actually. So there is my mix of um, PVA, water, glycerol and talcum powder and it's a reasonably stiff paste. Now what I've got here is a 4% solution of borax. The minute I add that it's going to start cross-linking and it'll bind it up and become fairly thick. So you add a few drops of it and stir like mad. Add a few drops and stir like mad. And once it's finished bonding, then you're finished too. So it gets very stiff very quickly. And there we go, it's done. Now that is pretty moldable. Now it'll stay moldable as long as you keep it wet. If you let it dry out, it's going to form a hard plastic. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to let that dry out. And here is the finished material. So it's quite tough, and it's a nice sort of white colour. Um, not much shrinkage, and you can cast it and mould it into whatever shape you want. But I was pretty impressed with that, and quite liked it. Uh, I also did um, one in sand. That's just mixed with sand, and <laughs> that's like imitation rock. That's really hard. So I did a sand ball. I did um, one with clay. Now that actually shrank quite a lot, and I think that um, that shrank because the clay shrank. Um, 
So it perhaps makes a bit of sense with it to stop that clay shrinkage and you may not get that kind of like meal biscuit look. And I also did one with no additives at all. And, and this I just um, slopped a bit of thing. Now this is incredibly tough stuff. I mean that took quite a lot to make it. Yeah. So it's pretty tough stuff. And although... Oh God. <laughs> although it's not actually waterproof, it takes a little while to dissolve in water. So there we go. There's a really interesting um, plastic that can be easily made at home and that you can use to mould and cast and if you use it a tray make sheets of. So pretty cool stuff. I liked it anyway so I thought I'd share it.